By the end of this video, you will have the power to increase your Amazon sales without increasing your ad spend. Now by how much, I can't tell you that. But what I can tell you is that if you can make it through these 10 minutes, you will have the power to have complete clarity over what actions to take now to increase your Amazon sales. Amazon gives you this power with something called the Search Query Performance Report, and it's free. You just need to know how to use it, but most sellers have absolutely no idea. So let's get into it. I'm gonna screen share and we'll walk through exactly how to use this tool to gain sales on your Amazon products right now. All right, so here's how you get to the tool. Just go to the hamburger menu, go down to brands, hit brand analytics, and then what you're gonna see is this screen's gonna pop up. You're gonna click search analytics and go down to search query performance. This is the report that we're looking for. This is possibly the most powerful data source on Amazon inside Amazon Seller Central that Amazon actually gives us access to. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is look at the monthly data. Okay, so choose the last full calendar month, um, but it should be like at least two weeks away just because of attribution. Um, so I'm gonna look at August 2024 here at the time of this recording. And now we have the data that's really, really important to us, okay? So what is this data? What are we looking at? So what this is, is the full funnel for each search term how many impressions we got, how many clicks we got, how many cart ads we got, and how many purchases we got. We're gonna ignore cart ads today because it's very difficult to actually affect that. We're gonna focus on what we can affect, which is the difference between impressions and clicks and the difference between clicks and who ultimately purchased. Now, what this tells us is how many total impressions every seller got for that search term. In this case, we're looking at B pollen as the top search term and then how many of those impressions we got. So there's total count and brand count. Same with clicks, we, we see how many total clicks there were on any product for the search term B pollen, that's us and all of our competitors, and then how many clicks we got. And then all you need to do is divide the two numbers, which Amazon does for you, to see what percentage of all clicks I'm getting. Same with impressions, what percentage of all impressions am I getting? And then I can see the same thing when it comes to purchases. What percentage of all purchases am I getting? So how do we use this data to increase our sales now without increasing ad spend? Well, you're gonna look for two particular things. What we're looking at here is this brand share percentage. And what we wanna look for here is where do we have a higher brand share percentage as we go down the funnel? And where do we have a lower and lower brand share percentage as we go down the funnel? So let's take this example here. Bee pollen for breast growth. Now, our product that we're looking at here is a bee pollen supplement. So this is a search term that Amazon has said is important to us because it has a high search query score. This is a combination of search volume and relevance to our product that Amazon scores it based off of. So one would be the best score uh, and it's worse and worse the higher the number goes. Another way to order this though is by brand count of purchases because that's what lets you know where your sales are coming from. They're gonna be roughly equivalent, this brand search query score in your purchases, because that's a big part of how Amazon actually determines the score for you. Uh, but we're gonna just sort by purchases because that's the data that we really trust. So now we're looking at from highest to lowest, which search terms produced actual sales. So we can see for us, bee pollen was number one. So that's one we definitely wanna focus on. That's kind of obvious though, right? So where are the deep insights? They tend to come from the mid tail keywords. The ones that are not long tail, meaning they get really low search volume, but they're not main tail either, meaning they just get huge search volume, but they're very not relevant to our product. We wanna look for the ones that are kind of in the middle. So this is a good one to look at. Bee pollen for breast growth was the third most important term in terms of how many sales it provided us in this period. So. We want to know what's happening in the funnel for this term. So let's take a look. So our brand share of all the impressions was 6.4%. So out of all the impressions, 6.4% of those impressions went to us. For clicks, our brand share was 3.46%. So even though we were getting 6.5% of the impressions, we're only getting 3.5% of the clicks. So what does that tell us? And now, before we even look at that, let's look at the brand share percentage of the purchases. So the brand share percentage of the purchases is also 3.5%. So 
So now we know where the problem is in the funnel. Obviously, once people click, they still buy. So our brand share of purchases is the same as the brand share of clicks. So we're about equivalent in terms of out of everybody who clicks all brands and out of everybody who purchases all brands, we're, we're not losing and we're not winning. We're kind of equivalent. Um, but out of everybody who sees thumbnails for this search term and everybody who clicks, we're losing because we can see we have a way higher brand share percentage for impressions than we do for clicks. So now we know where the problem in the funnel is for this particular very important search term. It's about the thumbnail because people who have that search, that search term are not clicking on our product as much as they're seeing it for other brands. So other brands are going to have a higher click share than they had impression share, which, which means they're doing better in the clicks. So what does this mean? Well, something that we would test is actually trying to put breast growth into the, or something related to that, that actually communicates the same idea into the title or something that communicates that concept into the imagery, something obviously that's in line with Amazon's terms of service, because you don't want to have just boobies hanging out on your product thumbnail that might get you taken down, but something that's actually in line with Amazon's terms of service that would allow you to communicate that this product solves that particular problem for that kind of avatar searching for that solution. And our product is not doing a good job in this case, even though this search term is very important for us. And it's actually the third highest ranked search term in terms of sales that are actually produced for us in this time period. So now we know for this avatar that's looking for that particular pain point for breast growth, we need to better communicate in the thumbnail, not necessarily the listing because the listing is about on par. We have the same click share and the same, the click share that we have is about equivalent to the purchase share that we have. So we could definitely be improved, but the main problem we know is the clicks because that's where we have the big drop off in our funnel. And we could do that for each and every term, which tells us exactly what changes we need to make either in the thumbnail or in the listing. So let's take a look at a couple other examples. All right, take a look at this. So this is a totally different product. This is an ice bag, basically like a cooler bag that keeps things cool. Now let's look at this term, leak proof ice bag. We could see our brand share for clicks is 40.9%, but our brand share for purchases is 68.7%. That's super high. So that means we are doing a really good job converting compared to other brands. Once people click on our thumbnail and get to our listing when they search this term, leak proof ice bag, they tend to buy more than they're buying other brands when they click on their listings. So we're doing good on this. This means we should probably drive more traffic for this term because we're already converting really well and our brand share goes up as we go down the funnel, which is what you want. That basically tells you time to drive more traffic to that term. Now let's look at another example from the same brand. Going down a few rows, ice storage bags. Our brand share of clicks is 15.3%, but our brand share of purchases is only 11%. So in the bee pollen example, where we saw a steep drop off from impression brand share to click brand share, we knew that was a click through rate problem. Now that we're looking at a steep drop off from the click share to the purchase share, we know we have a conversion rate problem. So lots of people are clicking, but less people as a proportion of all total purchases are actually purchasing our product, which means for this particular term, ice storage bags, and I'm sure here the keyword is bags, we need to better communicate in the actual listing that this is the right product for somebody searching for something that's a bag, ice storage bags, or storage. Storage could be the key term here too. We need to split test to find out but something is wrong with our listings ability to communicate this idea. The thumbnail seems to communicate it okay, but the listing is gonna need some work. All right, so that's the most important use of the search query performance report. You can go in and get these insights anytime so that you always know what kind of action to take to increase your sales. Now you know which search terms to drive more traffic to, either with single keyword exact match sponsored product campaigns or sponsored brand campaigns with a creative that's completely dedicated to that particular term or that particular search avatar. And you know which search terms not to drive more traffic to yet 
because there's some issue somewhere in the funnel, either from impression to click or from click to purchase. And you know what you should do about it because you can come up with ideas for what to beta test in terms of content to better communicate that idea to that particular avatar or that particular problem that the shopper is trying to solve. So this is the most important use of this report. But there's one other thing that this report does really, really well, which is it shows you your actual organic click-through rate. And there's no other way to get this data. You can see your click-through rate for your ads very easily in the ad console, but you can't see your click-through rate organically for search terms. This is the only way that you can actually get that. And the way to do this, Amazon doesn't feed it to you, but it does give you the data that you need to back calculate it. So you just have to export this data to a spreadsheet and you can add another column that will automatically do the divide. And it's as simple as your brand count of clicks here divided by your brand count of impressions here. That will tell you what your click-through rate is for that particular term. And then you can compare your click-through rates for each of these terms to see which terms provide a higher click-through rate and a lower click-through rate. Plus, you can continue to check this over time so that you know if your click-through rate for that particular term, especially the ones that are really important to you, are going up or going down. Now, if you're thinking, wow, this is really awesome, but it probably takes a lot of time and thought to continuously do this over and over again, and you want some help with that, my company, Sophie Society, runs Amazon PPC for brands and grows them profitably using the power of Amazon PPC and data analytics. So if you wanna explore working with us, click the link in the description of this video and you can apply there. That is it, guys. There you have it. You now have a new superpower. Use it for good, not evil, and I'll see you guys in the next video.